New Jersey taxpayers have been on the hook for $5.3 million in connection with a lawsuit filed by a whistleblower. And the interested parties, including Chris Christie supporters and a politically connected law firm, are prohibited from discussing anything about the Barlin case. Assembly Judiciary Committee Chair John McKeon is demanding details and has already sponsored legislation that would prevent this type of settlement from happening in the future. Michael Hill spoke with him. What is the Barlin case in Huntington County? Well, it had to do with a two-year investigation concerning the Huntington County Sheriff. Uh, the Sheriff, as well as two of the, uh, the undersheriff and one of the chief investigators were indicted, 42 count indictment, uh, and then administrations changed. Uh, and within about six months of the uh, Christie administration taking over, uh, the Attorney General's office took the extraordinary step of having the 42 count indictment quashed. Uh, that led to Mr. Barlin, who was a lifelong 20-year prosecutor, speaking his conscience and saying that was quashed for the wrong reasons, and he was immediately terminated and then filed a, a civil whistleblower statute. So very recently, uh, in August of this year, that civil lawsuit settled, and that's what uh, resulted in the legislation relative to not keeping confidential something deriving from a whistleblower's case, as well as giving the legislature a chance to hear Mr. Barlin's side of the story to the extent that he was allowed to tell it. Taxpayers on the hook for $5.3 million in this case. Well, can you imagine a $1.5 million settlement plus another $4 million in attorney fees, $5.5 million, and the linchpin to the settlement was keeping all of that information that he spoke out about confidential. That just shocks my conscience as the right thing to do. You've asked the Attorney General, State Attorney General, to release or to get rid of the confidentiality in this case and let the public see what happened here? Well, we paid five and a half million dollars for it. I mean, it's just an opposite to, to be able to use taxpayer money uh, to obfuscate the uh, bad conduct that was, you know, spoken out about to begin with is just, again, that goes against not only the statute, but against the public good. Uh, it passed 73 to nothing uh, in the assembly, and we have a Senate version that's going to move. So in a bipartisan way, this is just right. Anything involving a public entity or a, a, a public employee whistleblower statute should never be kept confidential. Why do you think you had no opposition? Well, because it's the right thing to do. This is clear. How can one of good conscience say you could spend public money to, you know, again, obfuscate what was bad conduct? You know, what, what's the whole, the whole point of the legislation is to allow employees to speak freely. So then to allow them to sue, not only to, you know, they're not allowed to sue to put money in their pocket. They're supposed to sue not only to compensate them, to be fair to them, but then to expose the conduct that they spoke about to begin with. Give me a sense of what you think is there, there. Look, I, I've, I've said it on record, I'll say it to you again. I think uh, what happened, at least from the facts as I know them to be, uh, compared to Bridgegate is, is frankly child play. I mean, we're talking about a 42 count criminal indictment relative to basically selling phony uh, or false uh, sheriff's credentials. Uh, it was, you know, and, and to quash that, to take the extraordinary step to uh, not allow the grand jury's recommendations to go forward before a jury of peers is, is pretty intensive. And I mean, there, it wasn't just the AG that made that, uh, that decision. There were memos going back and forth between the governor's office, the AG's office, back to the temporary prosecutor. All those things should be made public. I want to know what was said to who and why. The response to your request to the state attorney general, any response? Uh, crickets. We haven't heard a thing yet. Uh, we'll give them a little bit of time, maybe t uh, thinking it uh, you know, from the favorable light that they're considering it. Uh, but if we don't hear soon, then we're going to take the next step, maybe have several of the other prosecutors that were also punished uh, that were part of the original criminal investigation come testify before the Judiciary Committee, and then maybe go back to the, uh, the, to the assembly and ask for subpoena power. What does your bill do? Requires what? Well, it just requires that any whistleblower statute in the future, any settlement between a public entity and a public employee, not be made confidential. That doesn't mean you can't settle them. That doesn't mean you can't put a provision in there calling them to, uh, you know, as if uh, they're settling and, and no one's claiming any fault. But as it relates to any of the materials deriving from that litigation, that has to be a matter of public record. Even in sensitive cases? Sensitive Homeland Security, there would be a, an exception. But other than that, no. Why exceptions at all? John McKean, the chair of the New Jersey Assembly Judiciary Committee. Thank you, John. Thank you again for having me.